Oh, I love that guitar riff. Such a cool way to introduce us to F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64. Uh, note that this is not the title screen you would normally see. Um, I have unlocked everything in the game, so I get that title screen instead of, screen instead of the normal one. It looks pretty cool. So, this is F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64. I'll be playing on Expert Mode instead of Master, because like before, the Master Mode computers are total cheaters. But, uh... We now have 30 cars to pick from, which is like a, which is a huge expansion of the roster. And, uh, out of all 30, I choose the Deep Claw, which is piloted by, I am not kidding, an octopus. Certainly going to win points for character variety there, eh, hey, Nintendo? So, the first course of the Jack Cup is Mute City Figure 8. It's interesting to note that this course was featured in Super Smash Bros. Melee as a stage. So, what's different about F-Zero X aside from the huge roster that are all racing with us at the same time? Wow. I, you know, I've actually never seen a racing game with that many cars, like, at once. Pretty cool. Ah. Uh, so, what's different about F-Zero X aside from that? Well... You're actually going to see right here. Past the first lap, you are allowed to boost as much as you want now. However, every time you do boost, you can see that my energy is going down every time I boost. So you actually need to be careful with that. Because if you boost too much, any one bad slam into the wall could ruin your entire run. You still have limited extra lives. However, you do not earn extra lives in the same fashion as the Super Nintendo F-Zero. So, as for Mute City Figure 8 itself, it's a pretty simple course. The biggest worry is probably if you've hit all of the dash plates, because it's very important to get as high in the ranks as possible in the first lap, so you have an easier time down the line. Pretty easy to take first place there, and I'm so glad we only have to race three laps around it now. And you also no longer have to finish in the top three in order to continue. You now earn points depending on where you were when you finished the race. And whoever has the most points at the end of six courses, yes, six instead of five, will be the Grand Prix Champion. I love this system so much better than the original one. The next course is Silence. And like before, it's anything but silent. I love this course so much, it's really fun. It is all about speed. It is like one giant straightaway due to the way the course curves. And you are encouraged to go as fast as possible. Unfortunately, the Deep Claw is not the fastest machine ever, but it'll do for Grand Prix on Expert Mode. The music is also fantastic. Just look at how fast I'm going to go here. I'm going to break 1400 KMH, I think. You also go way faster than the, in the original game. I think the original game stopped you at like 900 KMH, was it? Uh, this little area with the pit area right there, um, you want to be very careful in the area around the pit area because if you are going too fast, you might actually fall off due to a bug in the physics of this course. Uh, you can avoid that, however, by tilting up on the control stick to point your nose down. And that'll get you through okay. Some speedrunners have actually been known to tape the control stick up in order to do that. <laughs> Pretty silly if you ask me. So much for Captain Falcon's skills eraser, he's not even in the top six. Next up is Sand Ocean, which I don't exactly enjoy very much. It's not a very cool course and the song is unnotable. So I might as well, uh, we're in a pipe as you can see, you can actually drive all around the pipe because there's no gravity, there's no gravity unless you actually fall off the course. Something about the course having magnets in it. 
But uh, coming up right here, coming up very soon, I think, when I cross the finish line for the first lap, right here I will demonstrate another new thing. You can attack the other racers. You have two attack options. You have a side attack, which is done by double tapping Z or R. And you also have a spin attack, which is trickier to pull and not all that more useful, so I almost never use it. I demonstrate it once in the sixth course, so be prepared for that. Of course, and as you saw, you can attack the other racers. Every time you KO someone, you will get a little star showing how many people you've murdered. This is an important tactic because anytime you destroy a racer, they are removed from the race and will receive absolutely no points for that round. So, it would be very nice if you were able to attack the people who are in the top six. Conveniently, as you've probably seen by now, the game will mark whoever is in second or first place with that little rival marker. So that you know who to attack. The funny thing is, the rival car typically almost always will wind up being in first if there's no input from you. Sort of a carryover from Mario Kart that I don't really like, where the game would, would just pick one racer and like make them godly while the rest are unnotable. Next up is Devil's Forest, which supposedly is on the same planet as Deathwind. And as you just saw there, the rival w started right ahead of me in this race, so I was able to take him out fairly quickly. The reason he started like in the spot next to me is because if you finish in first, you'll start the next race in 30th. If you'll start the, if you finish second, you'll start the next race in 29th, and so on and so forth. It makes it very easy to catch your rival in the second race if you finished first in the first race. Yeah, like that. This course is well, it's got dirt, and that's about it. That's really all I can say. It's also got a really creepy song. I don't know why there's somebody talking in the middle of the music. I also don't know why they use this song in Smash Brothers Brawl, but who knows? Smash Brothers Brawl made a lot of weird decisions. I love the announcer. He's a, if you get way out in front, he'll mention that you are in fact out in front. <laughs> Another thing I should point out is that if you're going very, very fast and you try to make a hard turn, you'll, your machine will start sliding. You've, you've probably seen that a few times by now. Try to avoid that. By this point, I'd be surprised if any of the racers, other racers, stood a chance at catching up to me. I'd say they don't. Next up is Big Blue. Unfortunately, it's one of my l least favorite Big Blue courses in all of F-Zero. This is the course you'd see in Super Smash Bros. Melee and Brawl that they use for Big Blue, the stage. It's not exactly very good. You can see that we are on the cylinder now. You can drive all around the cylinder and you'll be alright, but the problem I have with cylinder courses like this, and there are a couple more, is that they, t they kind of tend to require you to memorize where all the dash panels are. So, thankfully, I've got a pretty good idea of where they all are, so I'm pretty much safe. You are not in that much danger of falling off of the cylinder, but if you drive too fast and you like start to go airborne, it could happen. Other than that, it's a pretty. Other than that, it's a pretty okay course. It's got a nice song, at least. Which has been remixed endlessly, I might add. This turn right here is kind of annoying, but if you, but if you like, I use the Z and R buttons to, to tip the machine. You'll be all right.
I'm not really sure if driving on the inside of the cylinder gets you around it any quicker than driving on the outside. Most likely, actually. Well, it makes the most sense anyways, but I'm not totally sure. So lucky I got out of there alive. Unfortunately, I will not be doing a perfect 600 points Grand Prix, because I have gotten third place and shamed Octoman's family. <laughs> There's only one race in this Grand Prix left anyways. Yeah, odds of them catching up to me are pretty low. Oh no, it's Port Town. Oh well. Say, I never explained that machine setting screen, did I? Well, I might as well explain it now. You can um, adjust the you can adjust the machine's preference towards acceleration and max speed, which basically means you can sacrifice one or the other for more of the other, and that's the spin attack. You might wonder why I didn't go full max speed on certain courses. That's because if you go full max speed, the more you go towards the right with with a dial there. The, the slower your startup will be. And if it's all the way to the right, you'll have such a slow startup that it's not even worth it. On the other hand, if you go full acceleration, your speed's going to stink. So, you know, always don't go all the way left or all the right. right try to stay somewhere in the center. Also, this course introduces us to ice. Don't run over it, because ice is now far more lethal. And that... Uh, highlight of the course here is this big jump. You are still able to point your machine's nose in order to lengthen or shorten the jump, but uh, typically being in the air is not always a good thing here in this game. So I'm gonna try to catch up with the rival car here. Oh yeah, on the machine setting screen you can also give your car a fresh coat of paint if you desire. There's four color options to pick from, but I always just typically stick with the default. So it doesn't look like I'm going to get first place again. Uh, second place, not too bad. That'll secure my victory at any rate. It's almost unfair that if the computer's car gets destroyed, they they miss out on getting any points that round, but if you get destroyed, you have extra lives to fall back on. Speaking of which, if you destroy five cars, you will get an extra life. Not difficult to do. In fact, a common strategy I've seen is to just farm up extra lives, and any time a race goes unfavorably, just retry, even if you survived until the end. But anyway, that's the end of the Jack Cup. We're going to get our times. The, high, the highest speed we achieved during that course. And it's going to count the total of number of people we've murdered. Don't worry, they're safe. It's not like anyone dies in the Grand Prix. Those have got to be some steep uh, safety precautions. Octoman has taken first place and can now pay for his children's education. I guess money is hard to come by when your home planet is at odds with the Galactic Space Federation. It's impressive to me how all 30 racers have their own unique backstories and such. Well, unique meaning they're kind of interesting to read about. Ah, uh, nice mugshot there. Takora is Octoman's home planet, and he gets his face painted in fireworks. So, that's it for the Jack Cup. Coming up next is the Queen Cup. I'm Ephraim225, thanking you for watching once again.